Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department of Frostburg State University. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about uh, thiol synthesis. So in the previous video uh, in this series, I talked about the uh, acidity of thiols and talked about their structure and nomenclature. So in this video, finally, we'll talk about how do we make thiol. So let's say we wanted to make uh, one propane thiol how might we do that? Well, you might already know or suspect that the thiolate or, or hydrogen sulfide anion, this is a good nucleophile. Generally, nucleophilicity increases as you go down a group. And so if hydroxide is a good nucleophile, this should be a better nucleophile. It's also a weaker base. So it's less likely that elimination is going to compete. And so you might imagine uh, a situation where we have some alkyl halide. We run it, react it with sodium hydrogen sulfide uh, or, or some other hydrogen sulfide salt. Don't want to have um, just don't want to just have SH minus. I like to have neutral compounds here. And, you know, this is a, an SN2 kind of reaction. So we're going to have uh, dimethyl sulfoxide there. Uh, and this would generate one propane thiol. And on the surface, this looks uh, very straightforward. But unfortunately, it can get complicated really quickly. As I'm going to cover in uh, the next video on the, on the behavior of thiols, thiols are also good nucleophiles, and they tend to do things that nucleophiles uh, are going to do. Um, and under the conditions where we might generate thiolate anion, we're going to generate this one as well, uh, or, or might deprotonate. I'm sorry, we might deprotonate uh, the hydro or the propane thiol, I, sorry, and get uh, another thiolate anion. But regardless, regardless, uh, thiols can react with alkyl chlorides and generate uh, thioethers or sulfides. And even more problematic, sulfides themselves are still reasonable nucleophiles. Uh, under certain circumstances and can react again uh, with alkyl halides. So we need to uh, a situation that's going to avoid uh, contact of thiols with uh, alkyl halides. And so there are uh, three ways that we can talk uh, that ha this has been done. And there are some other ones. There's some other catalytic uh, metal catalyzed reductive thiolations and other things. But in terms of uh, reactions that you might know about or, or analogs of reactions that you might recognize, there are three ways that this can be done. And all of them involve, or two of them involve using a substitute nucleophile for, for the thiolate anion. And the third one involves switching around the alkyl group becomes the nucleophile and sulfur becomes the electrophile. So let's talk about all of those. Uh, the first method involves swapping thiolate for thiourea. And so thiourea is an analog of urea, except the oxygen has been replaced by sulfur. It has this kind of structure. Uh, and thiourea is also a pretty decent nucleophile and can react with our uh, act with our react with our alkyl halide and displace the halide anion and you know, that chloride oops. and form this kind of thiouronium salt. And then this thiouronium salt can be hydrolyzed with 
uh, aqueous sodium hydroxide, followed by uh, acidification to generate uh, to generate the thiol. And I'm not going to go through the mechanism of that uh, reaction right now. Most uh, most courses in organic chemistry cover the reactions of thiols before they cover the behavior of carbonyl compounds and their analogs. Uh, but this thing can be hydrolyzed with aqueous base. And so let's see how to move this down a little bit and give a, a heading. This is the thiourea method. Another method is the thiosulfite, thiosulfate method. So thiosulfate is oop, oxygen. So thiosulfate is this anion here. It's like that sulfate anion except uh, one side of it is a, there's this extra sulfur instead of one of the oxygen atoms. And it turns out that thiosulfate, uh, thiosulfate, make sure I say thiosulfate, uh, is also a, a decent nucleophile and can displace chlorine and other halogens in an SN2 reaction. Generate this Thiosulfite, thiosulfate ester, which undergoes uh, hydrolysis in water. To form the thiol as well. Okay. So these are two options. Okay. The third option that uses Grignard reagents. And so this one uh, turns the behavior around. Sulfur or the, the alkyl group now is a, attached to a magnesium halide. So it's a Grignard reagent. Uh, and it's going to react with elemental sulfur. Uh, and elemental sulfur actually forms chains or rings of sulfur atoms. Um, I'm going to just kind of be a little bit lazy and represent it as S. Uh, kind of makes the mechanism a little bit neater. Uh, it's really just as simple as nucleophilic attack on the, the sulfur. And then that forms a the corresponding thiolate anion. And now... with some aqueous workup, we can protonate that thiolate anion and get the sulfide. So here are four different ways, just as a quick recap. You could directly alkylate uh, the thiolate anion, but uh, it's a good nucleophile, but it generates thiols, which are also good nucleophiles and would react uh, again with alkyl halides. So in order to avoid that behavior, we use we can use uh, some other sulfur sources. So we can use thiourea, uh, which generates this thiouronium salt intermediate that can be hydrolyzed to the thiol. We could use thiosulfate, which generates this thiosulfate ester, which could be hydrolyzed to generate the thiol. Or we could use Grignard reagents and react them with elemental sulfur, generate the the, thiol, the, the alkyl thiolate anion, and then uh, neutralize that with aqueous acid to generate the thiol. Next up, we'll talk about the reactivity of thiols, especially in the, the synthesis of sulfides. Thank you for watching.